Hello people, this is self Tuts and in this video we will learn about JavaScript linting through Vim. So what does linting means? Linting means analyzing your code and finding the potential error. So in JavaScript linting, we will take our source code and we will pass it through a program and that program will tell you about the potential error that your code can cause. So for JavaScript linting in Vim, we will use the plugin scroll loose syntactic. We have already seen in the previous videos that we are using Vim plug as our plugin manager and how to install new plugin. So in this video, we'll use the screw loose syntactic plugin. So we'll go to our Chrome browser and we'll search for the website Vim Awesome. So Vim Awesome is a website which gives a curated list of different plugins in different sections like the language completion code display. Since we know the name of our plugin, will try to search it so this gives us the result syntastic by marty grenfell so we'll click it and since we are using vim plug as our plugin manager so we'll read the instruction here we can also go to the github page of this plugin and we'll see the full documentation so after reading this documentation you can you'll come to know about the different settings that you can do to change the behavior of syntastic plugin so we are using Vim plugin. We'll use this text that is plug scroll loose syntactic and we'll put that inside our VimRC file. VimRC file is a file which Vim reads when it starts. It reads all the configuration that is present in your VimRC file and changes the behavior of your Vim according to that. So the VimRC file is present in inside our home folder and we'll try to open it. This tilde sign tells us that we are accessing our home folder so inside our home folder vimrc file is there and we'll try to open it so after opening it we'll place the text that we have copied that is the name of the plugin with this plug prefix inside our plug begin and plug end so after putting the text here we'll close the file save and close the file by using shift colon wq and then we'll again open vim using the command vim then we'll use the plug install command of Vim plug and what it will do it will check our vimrc file with the new plugins and it will try to download it so suppose at present we have added this syntactic plugin so it will go to the github repository for that plugin and download the files from there so it has been done it has been finished so we'll again quit this file and we'll come to our terminal again now we have successfully installed this vim plug screw loose syntactic plugin so after installing it the vim plug screw loose syntactic gives us some command so one of the command is syntactic info so at present we are inside our folder vim tutorials and this contains a file called vim uh, contains a file with the name syntactic javascript.js so we'll try to open it through vim and we'll fire the command syntactic info so i'm showing you here that the command after installing screw loose syntactic is syntactic info that we got this command which is a part of this plugin so we'll use it and we'll hit enter so this will give about this will give the details about your file and what are the linters available so it is saying that the file type is javascript and the available checkers are null means there is no linting program currently installed and there is no currently enabled checkers so if i write something here say uh, console dot log and then self tuts and if i if, if i try to save it by using shift colon write then this doesn't give me any error but there is an error that we are not using semicolon so js yes, uh, in javascript linting it is it gives an error if there is no semicolon or it it is a best practice uh, best practice to end your uh, lines or statement through a semicolon so currently we are not getting any error by using the syntactic plugin so first we need to understand that how screw loose syntactic works so this is the program which is called syntactic a syntactic plugin can lint different file so it can lint a javascript file it can lint a python file it can lint a php file 
So what Syntastic does, it reads the extension of a file and then apply the linting on it. For applying the linting, it uses third party programs. Like for JavaScript, it uses JS Hint. For Python, it uses Flake or PyLint. And for PHP, it uses PHP MD or PHP CS. So these are the default linting program, which is a third party program, which is being used by Syntastic. If you go to the documentation of Syntastic, you can see here that the default program, like it is saying, G Syntastic Python checker is PyLint, or you can see here, for default, Python requires Flake 8 or PyLint to be installed in your path. So you need to install these programs or these third party tools in your path and then you can use it. So since we are using JavaScript, so we'll use JS Hint. So for installing JS Hint, we can use Node Package Manager and we'll just say npm g install JS Hint. So we'll go to our Linux box first. We'll try to delete this and then we'll try to save this file and then we'll use sudo npm g install JS Hint. So what it will do, it will go to the npm server and download the files from there. So it is trying to fetch the files and when it is successfully installed, then this is the tree that it gives. There is no error, so it has been successfully installed. So if I type JS hint help, so this says that JS hint has been successfully installed. Now again, I will try to open my file and this time I will say, again, first I will try to see what is the syntactic check info says. So this time it says that the available checker is JS hint and the currently enabled checker is JS hint. Last time you have seen that it was blank. So this time I'll type console.log and then self touch and I'll try to save it. So after saving it, you can see that this arrow comes here and it says there is some problem. So at present, the error description is not very good, but in the file, you can see that there is an error mark which shows that there is some error in this line. So to make the error descriptive or to understand that at which line number the error has occurred and why error has occurred, we have to do some configuration for Syntastic. So this is the configuration that you need to use. You just need to copy and paste these lines in your vimrc file. This will be present in our description from where you can copy or you can go to the uh, documentation page of uh, Vim Syntastic, which is opened here. So if here you will go, you can see that this is the recommended setting that is being asked. So what I'll do, I'll just copy it from here and I'll go to my vimrc file which is present in my home folder. So I'll go to my vimrc file and I'll do a paste here. So I'll, I've just copied it and I have pasted that uh, these lines here. So these are the recommended setting for Syntastic plugin. So now again, I'll try to open my file Vim Syntastic JavaScript from there. And this time you can see that the description for the uh, description by the linting program is present here, which says that there is a missing semicolon. So I'll try to put a semicolon here, which I have now put here and I'll again, I'll try to save. So this time there is no error. Now I'll show you that what happens if I write a function uh, that is add, which accepts two argument A and B. So these are the two argument that is being accepted, accepted by this function add A and B. So it will return me A plus B. So if I'll save the file, then everything is fine. But suppose if I say that after return, I'll try to console log something, means just a random thing, say sum. And if I'll save the file, this will say me unreachable console after return. So you can see that if you're using the linting program such as JS hint in Vim, then the coding becomes very easy, it means you don't have to run your program to see that everything is right or not means the all the error that that can be caused by your code is pre checked by this linting program and you can remove these errors from your code. Uh, so it becomes very easy for your code to run when you use it in a production system. 
so i'll remove this console log and i'll save it and this will give me no errors so this is all about how to configure linting program in your vim how to lint your vim file or javascript file in vim you can do the same thing for python by installing flake it or pylint and for php php md and php cs so by using these configurations you can do your linting in vim so this was all in this video if you like my channel please subscribe to it if you like this video